Hello friends, welcome to the polymer testing and this particular segment uh, we will discuss about the mechanical properties, shear, flexural, all those things we are going to discuss. In previous lectures we have covered about different type of a mechanical properties like hardness, tensile compression. In this particular segment uh, we, we are going to cover the shear properties that is a lap or sandwich test. We are going to discuss about the standard test methods. Apart from this, we will discuss about the flexural, flexural stress strain test, three point loading, four point loading, we are going to discuss about the cantilever test and then we will discuss about the, the standards. Now let us talk about the shear properties. Now usually the shear force is a parallel to the plate. Here this is a, the shear presentation and a plane parallel to given plane uh, could be slide away from it by uh, a certain amount of a proportionate to their separation. Now this uh, the shear stress, this can be represented as a tau which is F over XW, where W is the width which is not showing the figure and uh, the shear strain that is gamma, this can be represented as uh, X, this one over h. Now a homogeneous uh, strain with the primary extension being 0 and a volume remain unchanged and this is known as the pure shear. Many uses uh, of the plastic this includes the shear stress. However, shear testing is rarely done on any anything other than the fiber reinforced material. So sometimes uh, the extension ratio plays a very vital role like uh, so it can be represented as L1 is equal to alpha and L2 is equal to L and L3 is equal to, to 1 over alpha. So this is this can be rep, you, you can see over here. Now when the stress strain relationship is almost linear at small strain shear, shear modulus is typically determined. The shear stresses can result from a variety of loading system like lap, shear, punch shear, torsion and a four point loading. The most common method for rubber and foam is based on sandwich or lap shear geometry. It is used for dynamic test but not standardized for quasi static test on plastic because to the change of uh, gluing test piece. Now let us talk about the lap uh, or sandwich test. One or two or four elements may be present but the four element design is the most stable one. As the thickness of element is increased in this particular shape, the bending strain will grow but the thickness over area ratio will be kept under control to keep bending to a minimum level. Now here uh, you see this uh, particular uh, figure shows the, the lap and sandwich shear test piece. Now uh, there is this mathematical representation that is tau is equal to kbt cube g theta over L where tau this is the applied torque, k is the shape factor, uh, this b is the width of uh, test piece, T is the test piece thickness, G is the shear modulus, theta is the angle of uh, twist and L is the effective length of uh, test piece. Now it is common practice to measure plastic shear strength using punch or shear geometry. Although shear modulus this can be evaluated in torsion, it is often only used to gauge the stiffness of rubber flexible polymers and coated fabrics to assess their performance at low temperature. Now if uh, we properly arrange the orientation of uh, the reinforcement relative to the direction of the straining in the tensile test, shear can also be created in directionally reinforced material. A universal test machine sometimes referred as a UTM, this is equipped with the proper jigs and grips to mount and strain the test piece which is used to conduct the shear tests using the sandwich type of a geometry, punch shear test and test were 
uh, where the shear is uh, created from straining the tension. Similar to compression testing, strain can be detected with the transducer or by crosshead movement. There are various tests attributed to this one. One is the, the ISO 458 one. The torsional method, this is used in this particular ISO test for plastic shear. The scope of ISO 4581 states that uh, it is intended for testing stiffness in the torsion at various temperature, particularly at temperature below 0 degree Celsius. It is not the polymer specific. Utilizing pulley and weights to apply a torque to a strip test piece, the Clash and Berg apparatus is used to measure the shear. In order to test material with a varying degrees of stiffness, a wide tolerance of test piece thickness between 1 and 5 mm is to provide more flexible material utilize the higher thickness. The test piece and grips are submerged in suitable liquid and that is contained on Dewar flask to regulate the temperature. Dry ice is used to cool the flask or it might be frozen down below the lowest temperature or interest being before the gradually warmed up with the intermittent heating. A torque is applied following the conditioned period of 180 second to produce an angular deflection of um, between 10 degree and 100 degree for method A and between 50 degree and 60 degree for method B. Since uh, it is uh, well known that the reaction is frequently not linear with strain, usually the method B appears to be an effort to lessen this particular impact. After an arbitrary interval of say 5 seconds that is standardized to counter it to the effect of creep, the angle of deflection is measured and then as needed, the measurements are made at progressively higher temperature and the torsional modulus is then determined. Let us talk about the ISO 4582. It is the same test applied to plasticized polyvinyl chloride PVC. In this particular instance, the deflection angle is constrained to between 55 degree and 65, so much for the standardization and the temperatures obtained correspond to moduli of 323 and 4 megapascal. For each modulus level, the test piece thickness is altered. Let us talk about the BS2782 methods 340A and B. It addresses the evaluation of the punch shear strength for sheet and molding material respectively and uh, molded disc measuring 25.3 plus minus 0.1 mm in diameter and 1.6 plus minus 0.1 mm in thickness serve as a test item as per the method 340A. The thickness of the sheet uh, being tested up to the maximum of 6.35 mm is measured using the method B and using the rectangular bar test piece with dimensions of length 32 mm and width of 6.4 plus minus 0.2 mm. Let us talk about the test procedure. Now, by inserting the test piece into a unique bolster with a close fitting punch that bears against the surface of the test piece and the test is conducted on compression. The jig is set up in a universal testing device and the load applied to the punch is increased until the test piece fails 15 to 45 seconds after the load is first applied. So, the expression provide the formulas for calculating the strength of uh, for method A and B. So, this is S is equal to F over pi dt or S is equal to F over 2.096 bt. Now, there this S stands for shear strength, F for force at break, D for punch diameter and B for test piece width and T for test piece thickness. This is T that is test piece thickness. Now, let us talk about uh, the ASTM D732. 
Now they follow the same procedure as per the uh, which we have mentioned in method A. The only distinction is that uh, the test piece diameter is 50 mm and its thickness ranges from 0.125 mm to 12.5 mm. Now to find a guide pin on the punch, the test piece is centrally drilled. It cautions against the interpreting the shear strength calculation based on the shared area showing that the test strength is inversely related to the thickness. Let us talk about the other tests. The Hedner and colleagues, they explained a technique that makes use of a geometry similar to the lap shear and make reference to a number of geometries that have been utilized to generate the shear data. This is the figure that shear test pin after the, <coughs> the Hedner. Now, this particular figure depicts the clamping and straining of uh, a square test piece with cutouts on the shaded area. Now, even if um, there is an uneven distribution of stress, they still got good results. Now, they also tested a variation of this uh, with the tiny cutouts at the corner, but while it is improved stress distribution, it did not see um, to help determine the shear modulus. Unexpectedly, there is a pure shear and homogeneous tension across the test piece between the notches. The two element strain gauge that is glued to one face of the test is, is used to measure the strain. Now, it is easy to determine the shear stress by this particular formula that is tau is equal to P over A. Now, where A, this is the cross-sectional area between the notches and P is the applied force. Let us talk about the flexural stress strain, the flexural test. Now, a material's short-term flexural properties, they are virtually as a frequent measures as uh, it is a tensile one. The majority of the component, they are loaded in a variety of ways and bending or flexing frequently happens either on the purpose or by accident. Flexural tests also do not have the same gripping shoes that can arise in tensile testing and the strip testing item is simpler to make than a dumbbell. Now, when we talk about the flexural stress and strain test by measuring both the forces needed to bend a material and the displacement that the material experiences as a result of the applied force at a constant deformation rate, flexural stress strain characteristics may be determined. Now, in flexural, the test component experiences a maximum tensile force on one side that the transition to a compressive force on the opposite sides. And there are three possible loading modes. One is the three point, four point and a simple cantilever. Let us talk about the three point loading. The most popular technique, here you can see the three point loading. The most popular technique for determining the flexural stress and strain is the three point loading. The force is applied to the specimen at a three locations to achieve this method of loading. Now, being equally spaced, you see that these are the equally spaced. Um, apart from the outside, two supporting point is the central loading point. Now, in actual use, the specimen is often supported uh, by the two outer rods while being administered force to the middle loading rods. It will be equipped with the displacement measuring device and a force transducer. For rectangular bars, the force and displacement must be transformed into the stress strain characteristics. So, the modulus can be calculated from the things like E f is equal to L cube 4 B h cube slope. Now, where the slope is uh, uh, the force uh, deflection curve between the reference strain and that is based on ISO 178 uh, that is uh, 0 0.05 percent and 0.25 percent. Now, the, this, uh, this particular formula theta f 
is equal to 3 f l over 2 b h square 1 plus 4 s square l square. Now, this particular formula provides a more precise expression for the stress that accounts for horizontal component of the flexural movement. Since uh, S is uh, frequently significantly less than L, uh, the second term in this particular bracket uh, adds relatively little stress and can be disregarded. So, the expression for the stress modulus for a circular rod, this uh, can be written as theta f is equal to 8 f l over pi d q and uh, another formula in respect to E f is equal to 4 l q 3 pi d to the power 4 slope. Now, where d is the diameter of rod. Let us talk about the 4 point loading. Now, this is uh, you can say the typical figure these are the four points. So, the specimen is loaded using this uh, particular method at four locations uh, which we have described 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, now, with this uh, with the loading span typically set to either one third or half the support span. The benefit of four point loading is that unlike three point bending where the stress is concentrated at the central loading point, four point loading distributes the stress evenly throughout the supporting point. Now, in actual use, the specimen uh, typically rests on the two outside loading rods and the force is applied via the two middle loading rods each of which will be equipped with the force transducer and a means of detecting displacement. The uses of the entire inner or outer span, the definition of the measured deflection and of whether F uh, um, is a total force or that acting on the support all affects the relationship for the stress and strain in a rectangular su bar subjected to the four point bending. Now, uh, let us talk about the different equations there which we can take uh, from ASTM D6272, the 3 L, L the load span that is one third of uh, the support um, span. So, the flexural stress theta f is equal to f over L over B H square and uh, the flexural strain epsilon f is equal to 4.7 h s over l square. Now, if the load span is 2 l is equal to l, then the support is, uh, span is also equivalent. To. Now, where I the L is the support span, this distance in the millimeter in this particular figure uh, between the centers of the two outside uh, support uh, supporting rods on the beam. Now, I L is the loading span, the distance in millimeter between the two loading rod centers, S is the deflection of the specimen at the mid span. Theta f is the flexural stress and usually represented as uh, uh, Newton per millimeter square. Psilon f is the flexural strain. H is the thickness of the beam in millimeter. B is the width of the beam in millimeter and f is the force applied that is in Newton. Let us talk about the cantilever test. A simple cantilever test uh, is carried out by the different specification and a simple cantilever that is loaded at one end and secured at the other with the test piece. Now, this is only a common way in the form of a straightforward test where the stress was applied by the hanging weight, but it is now very uncommon. For a rectangular beam, the stress and modulus they are given by theta f is equal to 6 f L over B H square sin n F is equal to 4 F L cube over B H square S. 
Now the standard method that is uh, given by the ISO uh, 178, it is the international standard for flexural properties. Although it is rumored that uh, four point bending is being considered for some textile fiber reinforced po polymers, this considered the three point bending mm -hmm. test. Uh, let us talk about the ASTM standard, the ASTM D790. This despite uh, not being officially equal to ISO, pretty much follows the same principle. Now an appendix with the advice on how to handle the toe compensation is uh, a bonus feature. The stress strain curve exhibits an artifact that uh, at this particular point because the test system has taken up uh, uh, the slack. In addition, a four point uh, loading method using a configuration where the loading span is half the support span is described in ASTM D6272. Now this uh, ASTM D747, it involves clamping a strip of a material in a vise and applying force through a pivot point where the test piece free length uh, begins at the end of the vise. The stiffness and thus the material's modulus decrease as the bend angle increases. So rather than making absolute finding, the test is more suited for calculating relative modulus. Let us talk about the ISO 178. It covers many material which are um, like rigid thermoplastic sheets, extrusion and mold molding materials including reinforced or filled compounds in addition to unfilled varieties. The thermosetting material includes the reinforced and unreinforced composites, laminates and thermosetting sheets, fiber reinforced thermosets, thermoplastic composites as milled fibers, mat, woven rovings, woven fabrics, chopped strands, etc. Now the thermotropic liquid crystal polymers, normally rigid cellular materials and a sandwich structure made of cellular material, they are not appropriate application for the approach. The tensile test can be used to compare most of the flexural definition. This is given by the standard. Now, this is the typical ISO 178 uh, test arrangement. There is a shrinking edge, applied force and support. So, the ISO uh, 5893 compliant test machine with the grade A force measurement serves as the main piece of equipment. For force and deflection measurement, the criterion is given as a within 1% of full scale. A jig is required to load and support the test piece and the requirement for the support and the striking edge are organized. Now here this uh, there are recommended values for the speed of testing is given like a speed millimeter per minute and a tolerance percentage. So the test device should be able to maintain the, the table listed testing speed like 1 plus minus 20, 2, plus minus 20 and 3, plus minus 20 and the speed if we uh, have more and more speed then like in 50 millimeter per minute plus minus 10 percent tolerance should be there and if we go up to say 500 again the plus minus 10 percent tolerance should be there. The striking edge, the radius R1 and the support radius R2 there must be like R1 is equal to 5 mm plus minus 0.1 mm R2, uh, 2 mm plus minus 2 mm. Thickness of the test specimen less than equal to 3 mm and uh, R2 5 mm plus minus 0.1 mm thickness test specimen is greater than 3 mm. So the span L should be adjustable. The dimension and span of the test piece must also be measured and these measurement require a sufficient micrometer and vernier caliper or equivalent. Now let us talk about the test pieces as per the one, ISO 178, each direction must be evaluated with the minimum 5 test pieces. This particular measurement, this are preferred like L uh, length should be 80 plus minus 2, width should be 10 plus minus 0.2 and the thickness 4 plus minus 0.2. The middle and a third specimen length thickness cannot vary by more than 2 percent. So the deviation of the more than 3 percent is not permitted in the width of the middle third of the specimen length. And the specimen needs to have an unrounded rectangular cross section. There may be certain restriction applied if the selected test piece cannot be used that ratio of the length to the thickness must be uh, 20 
that like L over H must be equal to 20 plus minus 1 and uh, this particular table contains the value of the width uh, B in relation to the thickness H like the normal thickness H and then molding and extrusion compound thermoplastic and thermosetting uh, sheets must be like this and the textile in a long fiber reinforced plastic material must be standardized like this. So, the material with a very coarse filler and uh, uh, the minimum width this shall be 20 mm to 50 mm. Now, when we talk about the procedure without a material specification the test speed is chosen to produce uh, a strain rate and that is as close as feasible to 1 percent per minute or 2 mm per minute for the standard test piece. Although the flexural stress is estimated, one must assume that it may be break conventional deflection or something else entirely. Now, similar to the tensile testing, the definition of modulus uses a strain to 0.05 percent and 0.25 percent as the limiting values within which it is calculated. And the precision of the test component and the test equipment are severely constrained as a result. Now, for typical test piece 0.05 percent strain result in 0.08 mm deflection or the outer surface from the original position. This does not sufficiently account for the test of jig backlash. Test piece irregularity or misalignment of any of three loading bars. Modulus may be determined at other stresses or there may be other modulus may be measured. However, this is not stated. So, dear friends, in this particular segment, we discussed about the test protocols for flexural stress strain things. And for your convenience, we have enlisted four different references which you can utilize as per your requirement. Thank you very much.